Hurricane Barrel finally made landfall this morning as a Category 1 storm in Matagorda, Texas, bringing with it widespread power outages, issues with storm surge, and flooding concerns across the region, including the Houston metro area. This video is going to go over a look at the historical nature of Hurricane Barrel, how it formed, and what all records that it broke. Hurricane Barrel initially formed at the end of June and became the furthest east a hurricane has ever formed in June on record. It then eventually rapidly intensified into a Category 3, Category 4, and eventually a Category 5 hurricane as it started out the month of July. It became the strongest June hurricane on record, and it had the largest rapid intensification of any storm in recorded history in the month of June. It then became the earliest Category 4 hurricane and became the strongest July hurricane on record, and also the earliest Category 5 hurricane. A lot of these records were broken from 2005 Hurricane Emily that trekked through a somewhat similar area before making landfall in northern portions of Mexico. Eventually, it became the strongest hurricane to make landfall in Grenada, and it was the earliest storm on record to accumulate four and a half major hurricane days, meaning that it spent four and a half days as a Category 3 hurricane or higher. It also accumulated the most cyclone energy in recorded history by a storm in July and finally became the earliest hurricane landfall in Texas since 1986. I think it's important to keep in mind here that hurricane season in terms of peak climatology doesn't really ramp up until late August and into September. This could be a sombering prelude to what could happen later on this summer and into this fall in terms of the Caribbean and the Atlantic hurricane season. Conditions are ripe for more hurricane activity to develop as we go throughout this year. So what caused Barrel to be so record-breaking? Number one, it went through an environment of record warm ocean waters across the main development region and the Caribbean. If you take a look at the oceanic temperature map, this is what we call tropical cyclone heat potential. And ultimately, while it did weaken some as it worked into what we call wind shear, that, that stronger winds aloft in the atmosphere, it actually stayed a little bit stronger longer than what a lot of model data actually depicted. One of the reasons for this is because of the very, very high tropical cyclone heat potential that's situated near Jamaica and just to the west of that. It allowed it to slow down what its weakening would have likely have been otherwise. Now, as Barrel made landfall along the Texas coast, it came with a sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. We take a look here at the observed wind gust, uh, some gust of over 100 miles per hour just off the coast of Texas, and power outages associated with this storm are now at over 2.6 million. From Grenada all the way out to Texas, there have been 14 fatalities with one of them coming in the United States in the state of Texas. A lot has to do with the storm surge, the damaging winds. Uh, those were the main impacts with this storm on the Texas coast. In terms of total rainfall, guys, uh, we take a look here in the Houston metro area. This is as of about 12 p.m. Central Time. Already more than 10 inches of rain have fallen over the past two days with more rain still ongoing across the area. As this pushes further off to the east, it will bring rain into parts of the lower Mississippi River Valley region and into the Ohio Valley. For more forecasts ahead, be sure to like our channel, subscribe, and go to BAMWX.com if you're needing a solution for your business to get more minute-by-minute -minute details for your precise operation.